Previously on Homestuck. Sick beats, dude. Enjoy. Surely your mother is lurking nearby. You should be prepared for an unpleasant confront. Oh, psych! What? There's this really cool dude, okay? He's standing around being all chill like cool dudes are known to do sometimes. A cool dude like this probably has a really cool name, but he probably wouldn't just tell you what it was if you asked. He'd be way too busy for that. Busy being totally sweet. You could always try to guess his name, and if you were right, he might nod ever so slightly. That's a cool dude's way of letting you know there just might be hope for you yet. And her name. Insufferable pr- This guy doesn't have the time for this sort of bullshit! <laughs> Dave Strider. <laughs> Man! This guy is like 200% too cool for me. Your name is Dave. It is an unseasonably warm April day. Your bedroom window is open to let some air in and your fan is cranked. Arguably even more cranked would be your fly beats, which brings to us your variety of interests. A cool dude like you is sure to have plenty. You have a penchant for spitting out unbelievably ill jams with your turntables and mixing gear. You like to rave about bands no one's ever heard of but you. You collect weird dead things preserved in various ways. You're an amateur photographer and operate your own makeshift darkroom. You maintain a number of ironically humorous blogs, websites, and social networking profiles. And if the inspiration strikes, you won't hesitate to drop some fat rhymes on a mofo and represent. What will you do? Well, let's quickly retrieve our arms again from the cinder blocks. Nah. <laughs> okay. Get the damn beta and save your friend's life. This notion strikes you as nonsensical. You can't imagine how a video game could save someone's life, and in any case, you're quite sure no one you know is in any danger. Anyway, these are your copies of the beta you received in the mail recently. You've labeled them with your name in bold red print to distinguish them from your bro's copies, who labeled his in kind. Neither of you really gives a shit about this game or has any intention of playing it, but you'll be damned if you let that get in the way of your campaign of one-upmanship. Dave, bleat like a goat and piss on your turntable. You would never consider allowing any fluid even remotely resembling urine to touch your beloved turntables. That would risk breaking them. And a world without the gift of your godly science just doesn't sound like a place you want to be any part of. While you're at it, you might as well wipe out human civilization with a meteor or something ridiculous like that which will probably never happen. That sort of thing only happens in stupid idiot movies for stupid idiots. You will, however, contemplate bleeding like a goat for ironically humorous purposes at a later date. This is your closet. This is where you keep a lot of your crap. Like that box. And that bottle of... What is that? Is that... No. Inside the blue box we have... The autograph from Ben Stiller? This is the package that your friend John Egbert sent you for your 13th birthday a little while ago. It now contains nothing except a note and a certificate of authenticity vouching for the genuine Hollywood memorabilia which the box originally contained, and which you are now wearing to be ironic, but also to be incredibly cool in a way somehow intangibly related to the ironic nature of the accessory. You find it sort of exasperating to explain these subtleties to people. The box also included a signed photo of Ben Stiller, which now proudly hangs above your closet. Proudly and ironically. You capture log the box for what the hell is Dr. Who the what now? You capture log the box through your hash map fetch modus. Your modus's current hash function resolves the index by valuing each consonant at 2 and each vowel at 1. The total is divided by your number of cards, and the remainder is the index. Box equals 2 plus 1 plus 2 equals 5. 5% 5 of 10 equals 5. The box is capture logged in card number 5. Kill me, please! Oh, hell yes, it's an unopened container of apple juice. You thought you were all out. It's like fucking Christmas up in here. This is so great. You've got to tell John about this immediately. He'll be so excited. Wait, where? 
Weren't we talking about this in an earlier episode? I just found an unopened container of apple juice in my closet. It's like freaking Christmas up in here. You capture log the juice in the card seven. Two plus one plus one plus two plus one divided by ten is seven. In addition to letting your buddy know about this outstanding juice windfall, you figure you'll wish him a happy birthday while you're at it. In your own cool sort of roundabout way, of course. Good thing you looked at that box he sent you or you might have forgotten. You also might as well ask him about that beta. This kid's been harping about it for weeks. It would be cool if it came on his birthday. He'd be one happy camper. Wait a second. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, okay. Open that up. Hey, so what uh, sort of insane loot did you rake in today? I got a little monsters poster. It's so awesome. I'm going to watch it again today. The apple juice scene was so funny. Oh hell, that's such a coincidence. I just found an unopened container of apple juice in my closet. It's like fucking Christmas up in here. Okay, that's fine, but I just have one question and then a word of caution. Have you ever seen a movie called Little Monsters starring Howie Mandel and Fred Savage? But the seal on the bottle is unbroken. Are you suggesting that someone put piss in my apple juice at the factory? All I'm saying is don't you think Monster Ma Howie Mandel has the power to do something s as simple as reseal a bottle? Try using your brain, numb nuts. Now you guys probably recognize this conversation from episode one. For those of you who are a little confused, basically we're back at the beginning of the comic, but now we're seeing things through Dave's perspective. Go online and view sites indicative of your interests. You open the... Hephaestus. You open the Hephaestus web browser and direct it to your ironically maintained blog where you post monthly satirical reviews of GamePro magazine. Your latest post is a review of the March issue. You've been meaning to write a review for the latest issue too, but you've sort of been dogging it. Something about the game they're reviewing just doesn't strike you as right for st satirical purposes. GamePro! Grand Snack Fuck Yeah! <laughs> That's awesome. The only gang magazine you'll ever need. The only one I'd ever want. In a new tab, you open another one of your sites, a webcomic ironically maintained through a satirical cipher vaguely similar to that of your blog. It's called Sweet Bro and Hella Jeff. You have legions of devoted fans, most of whom are totally convinced of your creative persona sincerity, which is just how you like it. Look at Sweet Bro and Hella Jeff, what's that? Sweet Bro and Hella Jeff. I can't wait to be a useless piece of shit all day and play all these games. Fuck, I'm falling down all these stairs. I warned you about stairs, bro. I told you, dog. It keeps happening. I told you, man. I told you about stairs. Is there actually more to this? Yeah, there's a whole website. You do not have to read it, but they will reference this one that you just read a lot. So it's good that you read the one. Wow, there's actually a lot of these. Yeah. Yep. Started as a joke, and then Andrew Hussey was like, what if it was real? <laughs> what if it wasn't a joke? <laughs> ah! There's so much of this. Let's check the latest page in the Midnight Crew. You figure as long as you're chilling at your computer, you might as well see how the new MSPA story is going. You haven't looked at it in a while. You are members of a sinister gang called the Midnight Crew. Your nefarious plots are serpentine in complexity. Your schemes convoluted. You are planning a heist in your underground hideout. What will you do? Use Occam's razor on plans and schemes. Spade Slick uses Occam's razor to carve a circular hole into the heist plans, freeing it from the knife. You wonder what moron would jam the knife so hard into the table in the first place. SS, climb ladder and exit hideout. Implement nefarious plots. He gets up. Oh, uh-oh. Looks like a car is on the manhole. You push against the manhole cover, but it seems some unbelievable jackass has parked your getaway van on top of it. A familiar feeling stirs. That feeling is overwhelming, soul-blackening rage. It's the sort of rage that'll make a man feel totally justified in sporting an unnecessarily elaborate assortment of fancy blades. Skip ahead a hundred pages or so. What the hell is happening? You don't remember where you last left off, so you jump way ahead. You always forget to save your place in the story. It looks like tempers have become short in this pressure cooker already. You speculate that the tipping point may have been an ill-advised motion for a game of 52 pickup. 
Even though your adventure began recently, it's already over 3,000 pages long. You just don't have the time for this bullshit. You'll catch up later. Besides, it looks like someone's pestering you. You're pretty sure you know who it is. In some cultures, the persistent refusal of a lady's invitation to play a game with her would be a sign wanton disrespect. Either that or flagrant homosexuality. What? Oh no, no, look, I'm busy, okay? I've got a lot of shit on my plate. I'm sort of a big deal, okay? I know. Sometimes I wonder how you are ever allowed to pay for meals and restaurants. It must be hard to keep a low profile when you're always overhearing odd voice whisper. It's that guy who has a blog. Seriously, dudes be worshipping me left and right. I can't hardly walk down the street without stepping over torsos of the prostrate. Navigating the urban landscape, I'm sure, is difficult enough without an optical course of deferential flesh and skyward asses. Perhaps adapting the art of parkour to your unique environment would help? Yeah! I mean, damn, like, there's this scruffy little shit at my feet, an orphan or something, I don't know, face flush on the pavement. I'm like, dude, you listening for a stampede of buffalo or something? He braves a look at me and then gives my shoe a little kiss and scurries the fuck off. Heavy is the crown. Yeah, not kicking Oliver Twist in the fucking face every day is my gift to the world, I guess. Breathtaking magnanimity. Among other things... I just give and fucking give. Indeed, nary a jewel tumbles from your wish box of daily exploits, which I imagine does not sparkle. Oh, for fuck's sake. You're just lobbying me to play that dumb game. Baseless accusation. Look, I am telling you, Eggbird is all about that game. He will play it with you and probably be tickled retarded about it. I know this very well. I cannot hasten his mail's delivery, however. Yeah, yeah, I'll hassle him some more about it. And look, how about this? If you ever find yourself in the position where your life depends on me playing that piece of shit game, then I'll play. Will that make you happy? More than you know. It perfectly mollifies my grief over the demise of chivalry. And that's all for today, folks. Be sure to tune tune in next week or day or whatever. Thank you guys so much for watching. I, uh... Really, really, I really do appreciate it. All right, everybody say bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Goodbye.